Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We are assembled to discuss today the recovery, the reconstruction of Ukraine, and the contribution, the possible contribution of the Swiss private sector in particular. Let me please invite the President of the Swiss Confederation, Mr. Ignacio Cassi, to come uh, here, as well as His Excellency, the, the Prime Minister of Ukraine, Mr. Smial, to come. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We would like to welcome you in this room, and I would like to invite to this stage head of the presidential faction of Ukraine, David Rahamia, to the stage, and State Secretary Gabriel Enayhen. Let me start by inviting the President of the Swiss Confederation to give us his speech and a few words about the conference. Thank you, Mr. President. Good day. Grazie, Signor Frieden, per l'introduzione, Prime Minister Schmihal, Ministers, State Secretaries, Excellencies, dear guests, dear members of the business community, la scavo prossimo, welcome to the Economic Forum, Private Sector and Recovery. It is an honor to be here with you today at the Economic Forum hosted by State Secretary in Eichenfleisch and co-organized uh, with our Ukrainian partners. Thank you so much for organizing this uh, second day afternoon, which is uh, of such utmost importance for the economic sector. I am pleased to see many representatives uh, of the Ukrainian government, international delegations, representatives from both our business community communities, international executives, as well as members of the Swiss Parliament. This is a testament to our close economic and political relations uh, and to the global solidarity and especially European solidarity for our Ukrainian neighbor. This conference marks the start of efforts uh, to launch the recovery process. We just set out the principle for recovery this morning in the Lugano Declaration with President Zelensky. It is an important milestone, and we now have to behave according to these principles. The process of recovery, which will require the involvement of multiple stakeholders and the private sector, has an important role to play. Today, We have the opportunity to think about and to discuss how the private sector can participate in the recovery process and create an environment for new investment. This conference was organized for and with Ukraine. It is about Ukraine's recovery, its opportunities, its reform process, and the various challenges that lie ahead. And there are numbers of them. The Economic Forum is an integral part of the conference because recovery, security, reforms, and a functioning economy go hand in hand. We need a joint effort between governments, civil society, the civilian population, academia, and of course, you, the private sector. I'm convinced that business has a vital role to play in the coordinated, efficient, and long-term success of reconstruction efforts that will lead to enduring security and prosperity for the country and its people. Despite uh, many full challenges, there are investment opportunities in Ukraine. Yes. You correctly heard there are investment opportunities, despite the fact that the war is still raging. 
Our dear Ukrainian colleagues will give you important insights into the current conditions in the country and help you to understand the country's needs, the country's priorities, and the cooperation modalities with business. Already now, in this very first step, immediate step, where humanitarian assistance still plays an important role. Further investment opportunity and the role uh, business uh, uh, could play in the recovery process in four chosen fields will be then presented. Business representatives from all over Europe and other continents came here to participate in this forum to engage in the recovery of Ukraine and to seek and create investment opportunities in Ukraine. We need courageous people like you, ladies and gentlemen. Brave investors and entrepreneurs who are ready to rebuild, who are ready to create new opportunities in a challenging environment. I congratulate you on your willingness to help and on your courage. Reconstruction, rebuilding is easier with friends. Thank you all for being here. I'm confident that this fruitful exchange will move Ukraine forward. And I am hopeful that Ukraine's economy will flourish. In closing, let me thank uh, you, State Secretary in Eichen Fleisch, uh, and your team for hosting this uh, Economic Forum, Private Sector and Recovery event. And let me also thank the Joint Chamber of Commerce uh, and our Ukrainian partners for uh, bringing us together for this forum. Now let me hand over to Prime Minister Shmihal. Thank you so much for your attention. Dennis, you have the floor. Esteemed Mr. President, dear panel, esteemed participants of the today's economic forum, I want to welcome everybody here in Switzerland, Lugano. Unfortunately, um, there has been a full-scale war in Ukraine for 130 days, which means a full-scale war going on in Europe for 130 days. Russia is purposefully destroying our economy that we're going to be talking about. They're blocking seaports, shelling civilian infrastructure. Tens of thousands of houses and apartments were destroyed and damaged. 25,000 kilometers of roads and over 30 300 bridges, 12 airports, thousands of schools and hospitals were destroyed or damaged. The damages are estimated at least, uh, we were confirming that yesterday, 750 billion US dollars. And recently the president of the European Investment Bank announced the amount needed for the reconstruction of Ukraine's economy with, in view of all the damages and uh, GDP decline, which is more than a trillion dollars. Of course, this is going to take time in the conditions of incredible challenges. The Ukrainian state has demonstrated extraordinary resilience. The banking system is working. The uh, energy system is up and running. All the public services are being delivered. The state pays all the social payments, restores critical infrastructure, pays salaries to teachers and medical staff. We pay pensions and we are ready to restart our business. We have run specific dedicated programs to support SMEs. The economy is now pulled out from the comma in shock situation it has interfaced in the first months after the war had begun. We managed to conduct a relatively successful sewing campaign and restart logistics across the western border and restore part of the manufacturing and supply chains. But we should not be misled. The GDP downfall this year may reach 33 to 35 percent, unfortunately. However, Ukraine has survived and of course this stability would not be possible without the solidarity and consultations with with our partners. We're grateful for the weapons, financial assistance, humanitarian aid, and informational support. Your solidarity allows us to be sure of our victory. In March 2020, when our government was appointed, I identified the European integration of Ukraine as a key goal for myself in the coming years with as much speed as possible and as much efficiency as well. And that objective was very much shared by the President. Since the beginning of the war, we have doubled our efforts on this path. As a result, in June, Ukraine acquired the candidate status to the European Union. For us, this is part of our victorious history. 
a very emblematic event which actually produces quite tangible results in the long run. For business, this is about access to clear markets. Ukraine will not be just next to the EU, it's going to be the EU member state. This builds prospects to a completely different relationship in the area of capital investment. And I must assure you that it's going to take two years, and that will be enough to implement all the directives, principles, and regulations of the EU. And we've been working hard on this path with our parliament, with our partners. This has to do with our economic development, um, securing investment, and developing markets, and uh, holistic support to businesses. In the new vision for Europe, from Lisbon to Luhansk, Ukraine will be a powerful player in the military, energy, industrial and food sectors. Those are the very important areas. Ukraine has something to offer to the EU to make the Union much stronger, for it to be moving much faster by building its strategic autonomy and green transition. For example, since March we have already connected to the European power grid and so we, uh, when in the first days we were disconnected from the Russian and Belarusian power grids and the decision was made and we were supported by Europe, so right now we have exported 100 megawatts to Europe and this volume will grow eventually. In the nearest future we would like to reinforce our collaboration in six more industries, this is industry and this is the recognition of the Ukraine in produce in the EU markets, um, this is the ACAA agreement, this is customs, financial services, digital market, roaming, green energy. This is all producing new opportunities for business operating in Ukraine. And being in the center of this breaking point today, which has always been there in the history of Ukraine, in relation to Ukraine. We now have to consider this as a, a prologue for major changes. We were discussing this yesterday in the meeting that was dedicated to security and that was initiated by the Swiss Confederation's president and most of our partners and chiefs of delegations were taking part in the conference. We were actually discussing how to ensure those uh, military risks because we all realize during the warfare that's going on in Ukraine, it is very difficult for businesses to secure its operation. Of course, in peaceful times, we were talking about uh, obstructed access to financial markets and other issues that were standing on the way to business development. Well, now the key risk existing in the territory of Ukraine is of military nature. Any business person thinking about those risks will be making respective decisions. This is why the Ukrainian government, as well as all our partners, clearly understand that. It is important to ensure those military risks and getting support from our partners, which will be a safeguard for further development of business in Ukraine. We will attract more investment and, of course, we have partners who, who are ready to share those risks and come over to Ukraine and do their job. But the general trend needs to be moving to this direction. In continuing my story about our European prospects, I have to say that accession to the EU is a red thread that will run through all the transformational processes and reforms. This is one of the central topics of our future recovery plan for Ukraine, the draft of which we endorsed and approved during the conference. This is just the beginning of this new path. This is a live document that we would encourage you to join us in this effort. Let's do the vibrant business in Ukraine. Of course, we're now facing a lot of challenges on our way. We're still facing problems that we need to find solutions for due to the Russia's armed aggression. But we are nevertheless convinced that in a short period of time we're going to rebuild everything that's been destroyed and we will have the transformation of our state completed with a further accession to the EU. This is our ultimate goal and this is the objective that is very much pursued by the President of Ukraine. Like I said, the overall reconstruction volume will be six to seven hundred and fifty billion dollars. The principle is build back better. We were also discussing some different phases of the recovery process. We call that um, soonest recovery, then it's going to be fast recovery right after the combat is over, and then we're going to be transforming Ukraine in the long run with the development of our economy. But I would agree with what Mr. President has just said. 
Касисом про те, що ось цей момент оперативної відбови це скоріше соціальний обов'язок, який recovery as soon as possible. This is our social commitment that our government, our partners and our businesses are committed to. And when we have to provide for minimum requirements like electricity, water supply, power and everything else. So I would really like to thank all the businesses that hand in hand with government and other partners are committed to huge social responsibility and despite the shelling under the bullets and sometimes even under deadful threat they're still fighting to restore power supply water and other services to be delivered to our citizens sometimes our doctors have to travel under shelling to rescue our people our police officers are trying to also rescue people our emergency service are sometimes fighting the fires under severe shelling all those things deserve great deal of attention and respect. And I would like to thank all our people and the participants of the today's forum for doing the hard work despite the war, and you assume all the risks, and not only that, but also social responsibility. The implementation of this plan will give us a hope and will enable us to see our future with clear-cut priorities. The plan was designed across 24 different focus areas. Right now, the 24 working groups and around 3,000 experts have been engaged in the development of this draft recovery plan. If you, never, if you were never engaged in this, I would call on you to please Please get engaged and share your ideas. But of course, it's a very important trend for us, and I would like to underline this. This is energy independence, green transition, new generation, upgrading and restoring energy infrastructure, more production of the Ukrainian gas domestically. Those are projects with billion-dollar potentials. Since we're moving towards the European Union, we have greater prospects from the standpoint of access to new markets. I would also like to extend my words of gratitude to the European Union and the European Commission for abolishing the customs duties on the Ukraine on, on, on the Ukraine produced uh, products and commodities. Most of our partners are already considering or have already ad abolished some of the duties for the goods produced in Ukraine. This is, will facilitate Ukrainian businesses as a sign of solidarity and support of our economy, which is suffering a great deal today. Actually, continuing our discussion, I have to underline that we will continue our fight against corruption, but it's not just a fight. We're going to eradicate whatever loopholes there are through digital solutions. I'm sure you have already tested some of the digital services across different sectors. We've done a lot of services available to the businesses. And both Ukrainian and foreign businesses are already aware of those four letters, like the state architecture uh, control inspection. That's the symbol of corruption. I've never heard of any complaint that in construction perm permits we have any kind of corruption. And we're going to continue to upscale all this for other sectors, including customs. So it is very important to talk about this easy access and easy connection to the power grid. Of course, some of the challenges are still faced by ourselves, but I'm sure we're going to rebuild everything and that will be very prompt and accessible for business through implementing the technology parts, the PPP interventions and some other new tools that we're going to be incorporating. Definitely taxes can be paid online, customs clearance can be handled as well, with no person-to-person -person interface, access to the financial resources, that's something that we're working on despite all the challenges that we are facing in our macroeconomic and macrofinancial situation. Nevertheless, we're trying to actually continue our government program on easy loans. I'm sure it's going to be continued and uh, our partners hopefully will support us in this endeavor. Regarding the recovery and funding sources, before I move to my closing remarks, well, first of all, I've been continuously talking about this. We realize 
recovery funding must be going, must be sourced and channeled from the resources, those frozen and seized assets of Russia. This must be the key resource for our country to be recovered completely. Of course, in addition, this will be the money from the public and private partnership. We encourage businesses to arrive in Ukraine based on concession agreements and joint um, distribution uh, and uh, or, uh, product sharing agreement. Of course, this is going to bring a lot of opportunities. I'm sure businesses will be encouraged and interested to come over even during the war and definitely after the war ends. I'm sure you're going to find a lot of tangible and lucrative projects that you're going to be implementing successfully in our country. Another source is soft loans, grants and investment from partner states. The third source, this is private investment. Like I said, this can be done through the public and private partnerships. The state is ready to share the risks with the private business. And number four, this is the money from the Ukrainian budget. And of course, the state is going to be a very active player in trying to incentivize business development in, in the country. Ukraine will do everything possible for the Russia's funds to be transferred to Ukraine to compensate for the victims. We were talking here about an amount between three to five hundred million uh, billion, I'm sorry, uh, dollars that are now seized on our partner states' accounts. The German government has already seen some of uh, some of the successful cases when the Russian oligarchs' assets were seized. And also in Canada, they passed the national legislation which allows uh, confiscating the seized Russia's assets and then for them to be transferred to Ukraine. The United States Congress has been actively working on this, as well as other partners. So we expect the European uh, Union member states, Great Britain, I mean the United Kingdom and Japan will follow the same best practice. Well, in the future we will probably be um, proposing to adopt an international legislation on this matter so it becomes a sustainable security mechanism and every potential aggressor will realize that it's going to cost a lot of money if there is this kind of aggression wedged on Ukraine. The full-fledged war in Ukraine has become an unprecedented challenge for us, and this has become the point of no return. I'm sure we're going to take advantage of this opportunity and we'll be able to build more sustainable, prosperous and much more successful nation after the war. This recovery, of course, can be the idea that will unite everybody and this is incredibly important for international businesses. Historic experience has shown that such recovery processes are of mutual benefits that will incentivize not only Ukraine's but also the partner countries' economies. Definitely we're talking here about honest and transparent relations with the partner nations as well as their businesses. Uh, we would encourage you to build the new Ukraine together with us. It's going to be the new Ukrainian miracle that is going to come true. We believe in this, we trust, we will build honest and transparent relations between each other. The victory of Ukraine will be the victory of the future over the past. I want to thank all our partners for their support in our struggle, for our peace, for our nation, for our state in this horrifying, unprovoked war of Russia against Ukraine. Thank you very much for your attention. Glory be to Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. May I ask you, uh, Ms. Unaikin Slash, to come and deliver your speech? Thank you. Signor Presidente della Confederazione, Mr. Prime Minister of Ukraine, distinguished ministers of the Ukrainian government, dear representatives of the Swiss and Ukrainian business community, ladies and gentlemen, I am very honored and delighted to welcome you here to this economic forum organized under the aegis of SECO in partnership with the Ukrainian government with the Joint Chamber of Commerce Switzerland Eastern Europe, Central Asia, South Caucasus, JCC, and the Swiss side, and the Western NIS Enterprise Fund and Ukraine Invest on the Ukrainian side. The very difficult economic situation in Ukraine following the invasion of Russia and the tragic consequences of the war are affecting the whole economy.
Switzerland, which is highly dependent on international trade and has adopted the EU sanctions, has not been spared with rising inflation, increased prices of raw materials and agricultural products, and disruption and blockage of international production chains. At the same time, there has been a huge outpouring of solidarity from the Swiss population for Ukraine. We welcomed Ukrainian refugees who were granted special status to work in Switzerland until it is possible for them to return to Ukraine. Before the outbreak of the war, bilateral trade between Switzerland and Ukraine reached more than 800 million, doubling since 2016. Switzerland was the third largest investor in Ukraine with 3.1 billion US dollars of investment, uh, contributing to something like 12,500 jobs. Swiss investments have increased eightfold compared to 2015. Since 24th of February, the situation has changed radically, but the majority of Swiss companies active in Ukraine, some of which are present here today, are ready to continue to be active in Ukraine. Predictability, transparency, and the rule of law continue to be important framework conditions for them, as will be further reforms and the fight against corruption. With the Ukraine Recovery, Const Recovery Conference, Switzerland wants to partner with Ukraine as it defines a vision of its future. Switzerland also wants to ensure that Ukraine is not left alone to face the challenges of reconstruction. The objective of this economic forum, therefore, are to present current business and infrastructure conditions in Ukraine, to highlight specific sectors of Ukraine's economy that should be prioritized for reconstruction, to showcase Swiss expertise in priority sectors that Ukraine has targeted for reconstruction, and finally, to launch the reconstruction process and form new partnerships by enabling contacts between Swiss companies and Ukrainian representatives from government and the private sector. Cooperation with Ukraine is not new to Switzerland. We have been active in the area of economic cooperation in Ukraine since its independence. And in 1999, we opened a cooperation office in Kiev. We support the reform efforts and are particularly committed to improving the population standard of living by providing more efficient public services and by promoting sustainable economic growth and climate change mitigation. The total budget amounts to about 108 million for eight years. Furthermore, we have two important instruments through which we can develop our economic relations. We have a joint economic commission, which gathers every two years, and we have a free trade agreement, which we concluded in the framework of EFTA in 2012. Thanks to this agreement, all tariffs on industrial products are already at zero between EFTA and Ukraine. A vast majority of Ukrainian exports benefit today from privileged market access to Switzerland. But as the agreement is now 10 years old, the EFTA states are open to consider a modernization of the agreement, as they decided at the recently held EFTA ministerial meeting in Iceland. Ladies and gentlemen, the tragedy of the war in Ukraine has called for the urgent need for humanitarian aid in the affected regions and for refugees. Since the beginning of this terrible invasion, Switzerland has provided 80 million Swiss francs in humanitarian aid. In addition to government aid, there is also a great deal of support for companies. Swiss companies are active in Ukraine and in the border areas to help employees and general population in distress. Significant financial donations from have been distributed locally, either directly or via relief organizations, foundations, or humanitarian agencies. According to a recent survey by Economie Suisse, the companies surveyed have already donated over 27 million. This represents an average of more than 1 million from each company that responded to the survey. In addition to their financial commitment, Swiss companies surveyed, such as Roche, Novartis, Nestlé, Datwiler, Weidmann, and Zurich Insurance, are contributing in-kind donations, the value of which far exceeds the financial donations. By providing several million boxes of medicines, 
hundreds of tons of food, clothing, blankets, flashlights, and much more. Furthermore, most Swiss companies continue to pay wages to the Ukrainian employees. And let me mention here a very recent example, namely the MOU signed this morning by the Syngenta Group with the Ukrainian Deputy Minister of Agriculture on a commitment of 400 million Swiss francs to provide Ukrainian farmers with products and services on commercial credit terms, as well as support of logistics and scientific and technical programs. But more is done. We have seen the Ukrainian economy, economy shrink by, as you were mentioning, Mr. Prime Minister, 34 to 35 percent. One of the consequences of this is a massive drop in state revenues. In spite of this difficult situation, the Ukrainian government is doing everything to maintain a functioning state. In the framework of the spring meeting of the Bretton Woods institutions, Switzerland announced that it would contribute 10 million Swiss francs to maintain the essential non-military functions of the Ukrainian government. In addition, we will also support the multilateral initiative at the EBRD with an additional 10 million, 10 million Swiss francs. This support is channeled through existing initiatives and aims at ensuring that the competitiveness of small and medium-sized enterprises is maintained. In particular, it helps small and medium-sized enterprises in the north and in the east of the country to relocate to safe, safer areas within the country. The respective agreements have been signed today, about an hour ago, and disbursements have also just been authorized. But we all know that for the reconstruction of the Ukraine, the private sector will be key. And we also know that for reconstruction, an early focus on rebuilding infrastructure is key. So indeed, that is why we are here today. Uh, we, are, we are aware of the fact that in order to give a signal of hope and confidence to the long-suffering population, uh, infrastructure will be uh, a key area. Rebuilding the infrastructure of Ukraine will need a joint effort between the government of Ukraine, partner governments, multilateral development banks, the private sector and civil society. The private sector will be a key player, as I was mentioning, and businesses are indeed called upon to be at the forefront of uh, this reconstruction. So today's program, with a focus on four specific sectors, addresses the explicit wishes of Ukrainian side. We have among the participants in this forum Swiss companies that are able to provide Swiss expertise in the four sectors that are manufacturing, logistics, energy and digitalization. Let me mention in this context the newly established Infrastructure Team Switzerland platform, which is present here today and which can provide information and access to Swiss knowledge in the field of infrastructure. Let me also mention that in addition to the Swiss speakers who are on the program, the presence among us of the following Swiss economic associations and organizations um, is here, namely Economy Suisse, represented by Mr. Jan Atteslander, then the Swiss Federation of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, represented by its chairman, Fabio Regazzi, the JCC, represented by its uh, president, Mr. Marcel uh, Pavlicek, and this JCC is the Swiss implementing partner of this economic forum, organizes numerous business activities to develop Swiss-Ukrainian business throughout the year, and opened a branch in Ukraine in 2019 to foster the objective. We will soon start with the different presentations. I encourage you all to take advantage of the presence of the many representatives here and to establish useful contacts for the future reconstruction of Ukraine. In this respect, I also invite you to participate at this side event that is organized by the Ukraine Swiss Business Association uh, together with the UN Global Compact Network Swiss Liechtenstein and Ukraine. This happening will take place from 5 p.m. onwards at the Hotel Pestalozzi next to the Congress Center. Ladies and gentlemen, looking into the future, let us fill the objective building back better, also mentioned by the Prime Minister before, with many ideas and projects in order to assist Ukraine in preparing to enter the European family, 
which unites us all through our shared values. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, State Secretary, for all your welcoming words, for all support that is coming from Switzerland that is offered and provided already. Thank you very much. And now I would like to give the floor to Mr. David Rahamia, last but not in any way the least, member of the Parliament of Ukraine, head of the presidential faction in the Parliament of Ukraine, and also head of supervisory board of Ukraine West. Thank you. I'll be quick because uh, all respectful gentlemen and ladies already told basically everything about what's happening. But I believe I would touch the most important points because uh, last day, yesterday, I spent about half of the day in the business hub. So across the street there is a business hub and there are a number of representatives of different businesses over there, starting from food, food uh, programs, energy sector, retail sector, FMCG sector. And everybody has uh, its own problems, definitely, but we all have common problems. So uh, what I find, Ukraine is normally an entrepreneurship country. Everybody dreams of stop, you know, stop working for somebody and start working for himself. So that's why we have one million entrepreneur, private entrepreneurs registered every year. So it's like really, really inside, inside the mentality of Ukrainians. The issues what we have now, we have five million, you know, that we have 12 million people, uh, you know, temporarily displaced. Uh, more than half of those coming from east to the west, so they're still living in the Ukraine. And five million, women, mostly women and kids, are outside of the country. So this is number one issue because uh, the markets, the consumer markets, just went away. So the businesses cannot have enough revenue to uh, make enough money you know, to cover their expenses. This is number one. Number two, which is for everybody, is logistics. Logistics started to be four times higher or five times higher, higher in some cases because you need now to go by train. We used to, be, used to fly before. We used to have ports. We used to have sea access. Now everything is trained. Train is limited. So right now a lot of investments are coming to increase our capacity to go through trains you know, to build new railway stations, tunnels, and so on. So there is, if, if somebody in, uh, here is interested in building, you know, and joining infrastructural projects, I think it's a good fit because it's going to be a new investment, you know, direction for the next five to ten years. Anyway, even if we open the ports and open the seas, I think people will still uh, remembering this, and so it's going to be still, you know, a backup channel that we will stay forever. Uh, third one is access to the capital, definitely. You know that uh, the, because of the gap of the budget, about $5 billion a month, it's, you know, it's a lot of money. So we, 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 we kind of stopping uh, all the programs for supporting the uh, low interest rates, you know, how so businesses cannot get properly financed. I think it's an opportunity for Swiss businesses to, to, to uh, form joint ventures and help those businesses. I'm talking about established businesses that have already proven business model, that have uh, already a cash flow and so on. So you can help them with some finance and get some shares back. So this is how we could quickly create a lot of joint ventures. Number five, but it's like, I think it's number one. For all greenfield projects, we need war risk insurance, what the prime minister said, because uh, I don't believe that any you know, respectful uh, international financial institution will ever finance any project in the Ukraine if you don't cover the risk that you know, the missile comes and just hits the building or the factory or kill the people and so on. So we have to come up, I think it's more governmental task, so the business, businesses cannot solve this task. So it has to be collaborative effort of our European partners, US, UK, Canada, Australia. We have to make a joint board and uh, plug in Vienna Insurance Group, you know, DFC and other respectful institutions and just create a single product that will cover uh, those risks. I know that it has been done before in Iraq, in Afghanistan, so there is experience uh, already in the, in, in the world practice, but we don't still, still don't have it. And I should, uh, many, many businesses are asking me, many investors who want to come to Ukraine, they're asking when. And uh, I think that there is a mistake in the minds saying, okay, we need to first wait when the war is stopped, and then we start investing. This is not true because 
we have in, inside Ukraine, we have in fact now uh, several countries. There are front line and their people are want, want just to save their lives. And we have here mayors of the cities and uh, they are taking care about how to, you know, how to leave, just leave. So the, it's, uh, I think, you know, the safety is number one priority. We have the center of Ukraine, which is preparing for potential negative scenario. So they might become in the future a front line. So they are doing the protective things, you know, like fortification units. So they are preparing themselves, but at the same time, they want to keep their life as usual. And then we have a Western part of Ukraine where people from the East are relocating their enterprises and the factories. They are moving people, thousands of people are actually going there. The real estate, because of the deficit, the prices are going up. You know, the commercial real estate has a deficit, so the prices are going up. Uh, the border is uh, closed, so there is a lot of trans-border activities going on. The logistics is, has a very, very great potential. So there is already good opportunity for the businesses uh, to start making good money and start investing, co-investing. So we're not talking about the charity. We're talking about the real business with, you know, with the profitable outcomes. So that's why I think that we need to join um, our forces as a government of um, so-called coalition again. You know, for the, so we need to help the businesses solve issues that the businesses cannot solve by themselves and then just let our businesses do the job because they, will, they know how to do the job. And um, on another note, what the Prime Minister said, we are digitally native, native country. We have, I know that many uh, Swiss people that we were talking were amazed, you know, that all of our documents, driving licenses, passports and everything is in our mobile phone. So people are usually, we got used to it already. We did this, you know, uh, huge reform. And the next stage of this reform is to digitalize the business processes. So the, all the government contacts with the business has to be digitalized. This is going to be, so we, we just kill the corruption. So we don't need to fight the corruption because to fight, you need fighters, you need to budget and so on. But if you kill the corruption, so you don't have, you have nothing to fight. Most of the corruption is in the, inside the bureaucracy. So once we kill the bureaucracy, there is going to be, yesterday I had a very, very great talk with the guys from the energy sector. They are installing wind solar, uh, wind turbines in the Ukraine. And I'm asking them, okay, to buy one, you know, one turbine, you need 5 million euros. If you, it, it doesn't depend, in Ukraine or in Poland or in Denmark, you know, it's still the same price. I say, why would you invest in Ukraine now when the war is there, if you can go and do the same in Poland? And the answer is, in the Ukraine, you did a great job to simplify the procedures so we could install it starting from the day one when we just invented this idea. And when it starts working and generating the money, it's eight months. In Poland, it takes three years. In Greece, it takes six years. So that's why I think our advantage, that we should speed up the economy, we should simplify all the procedures, digitalize those, and make the fastest uh, you know, transactions in, in Europe. And this is gonna be our niche. This is how we can be you know, competitive on European markets. And this is how foreign investors and local investors will believe in this state, you know, and we get closer to our recovery plan. Thank you so much.